exploration. Uh, it's been a little while. We've been off over some holidays. Um, and I decided to come back out in a storm. So uh, today, it's not a huge storm, but it's big enough that they've canceled a bunch of ferries. And uh, this is one of my favorite times of year. Oh, that's kind of silly. I love all the times of year. There's always something amazing. But, uh, but here, right now in this semi-storm, rather windy day, rainy day also, um, it's just an opportunity to see, uh, how would you explain it? Sort of the way, uh, the way the world renews itself or the way our ecosystem renews itself, one of the many ways. Uh, so basically, obviously the wind is making changes um, and there were huge big waves. This is the time of king tides. So at this time of year, you're getting these massively high tides. Um, we also get high and very low tides in June, but right now with the storms, the, the waves like beat up on the shore and they get higher than usual. So they bring up things like driftwood much higher than they do in, in like March or September or something like that. And um, yeah, so I don't understand a huge amount about the ecology of storms and driftwood, but I know enough to know to look for fun things at this time. Basically, um, what happens is up on the land during the, during the year, there are various storms and logging and all sorts of things that make the trees come down. And then they're often washed out to sea by rivers um, or carried out by logging companies and then barged around on log booms, which sometimes break free and are also released. So either the river brings the, the logs down or logging companies do and they drift around in the ocean. But before they get there, they lose all their branches and uh, th their limbs and all the, the plants that they've gathered from the river as they bash their way down the river and the little animals that maybe lived in them, insects or who knows what. And then they get out to the ocean and in whatever estuary they end up in, they start to mix with salt water and some of those insects or plants that they've brought down with them die um, and they become food for all kinds of things that live there and uh, basically they to me they represent the connection between the on land ecosystem and the ocean ecosystem and uh, well not the connection but one of the many and so basically they're bringing all this land-based nutrient into the ocean and then if chance has its way it takes them out into the ocean and you have these driftwood logs floating around where they are home to uh what are those little mollusks called i always forget this shipworms and other worms that aren't really worms they're actually little sort of clam that dig their way in and, and bore holes in the logs and live in them out in the ocean if they didn't have driftwood they would only have boats so we should be thankful <laughs> there's driftwood out there for the shipworms to eat. And, uh, and then they come up and the storms bring them back on land with mollusks or barnacles or sometimes larger sea life. You know, sometimes there are big log drifts in rivers or on, on the ocean and things like otters and, well, river otters and sea otters, seals, all kinds of birds basically associate with them because they're, they're like little floating islands full of nutrients, right? Sometimes you even find things with trees growing on them, well, like little trees. But uh, yeah, it's basically the logs bring the nutrients out to sea and then they bring them back in. So I'm here in this rather tame storm, getting tamer as I stand here. And I thought we would just look around at some driftwood and uh, yeah, see what interesting things we find. Like this clamshell I've been holding the whole time. If you watch this often enough, you probably know I constantly pick stuff up and just walk around with it but yeah clamshell let's go see some of the logs around here so i've stopped here just behind a few of the logs this isn't a huge log jam, but sometimes, I mean, on the other side of the rock there, 
um, I guess a few months ago, there was one that was like 12 feet deep. So sometimes it's really a dynamic space, but right here is a good place to see how it actually changes the landscape. So these logs are here and you can see this collection of some, here's some seaweed and alder leaves from onshore, little bark bits and something that looks like a decomposed dog poop. So I'm not going to pick that up, but well, I'll use this stick here. Look at this possibly decomposed dog poop or otter poop, I guess, who knows. And uh, uh, so what happens is the, the waves come in and they push some of this stuff up from the ocean and some of it is falling from the land and they kind of gather here so that you have this whole collection of both shore life, I can drop the clamshell now, and, um, and sea life. And I'm totally distracted because there's something already that's so cool. I have no idea what this is, but it could be Oh, I don't know. I have no idea what it even is. Sometimes though you find uh, like forage fish eggs on the seaweed that washes ashore and uh, well, all sorts of things. And uh, uh, oh, and about changing the landscape. So all of this stuff collects here and all of the logs stop a lot of the gravel from washing back. So it actually over the course of the, the season, completely changes the whole landscape of the beach over and over, like many times. Um, uh, if you watch this series regularly, you'll remember uh, maybe November last year sometime, I was um, looking at a creek, which basically does the same thing. As the storms come and the, uh, the, everything floods, it, it washes out areas and totally changes the forest floor landscape. Anyway, this changes the beach landscape. So. Um, and it creates then little dens, which I'll take you to just over here. So this is a gigantic um, root. No, it's not even a root ball. The base of a huge cedar, it looks like to me, um, with a bunch of other stuff underneath it. And, you know, all the same detritus that I was talking about. This has a lot of styrofoam in it which is really an unfortunate truth about our lives and ocean. Um, but the same thing, lots of little bark and twig pieces, lots of little chipped pieces that may be from logging, but it also some of them could be from beaver chews from upstream. Um, anyway, last time I was here, I saw a baby river otter come running out. He was about, his body was about this long, including his tail, he was about like that. So it's, it's like a nesting place, a habitat for things. Who knows? I'm just going to look around and see if I find anything cool right now. Ooh, look at this. Totally. I just think this is so beautiful. It's so one color on the inside, another color on the very weathered outside of what was this log, and it's still bright, bright, bright yellow inside. So I'm guessing this is like sun and, and rain weathering from years, and this was protected somehow inside it. I don't know how it became so orange, but interesting. I know you probably thought I was finding something living and I'm, I'm not, but I find these things so beautiful anyway. This is not something that I was actually even thinking about earlier, but oh, it's so pointy, pointy rocks here. Um, but this lichen all over here, which uh, it just fascinates me because it makes me wonder if thinking about things coming from the forest out to the sea and then back again to the beaches, uh, lichen you also find in the forest and on bluffs and on the rocks right down at the ocean's edge even. And it's amazing to me. It's of course all different types of lichen everywhere, but it makes me wonder if maybe the way things get colonized, like this rock with 
lichen happens because some fungus or bacteria or who knows what came here and and made an appropriate place for this little community of lichen to grow for example um, you know or this plant I don't even know what this old dead leaves are right now but uh, one of the bluff plants that we have here I guess and uh, it's just interesting to think about how things come to live where they do you know like people who just end up having to move to I don't know what you know Kenya or something and and they make a new life for themselves and over generations become new people with new histories like maybe that's how this particular lichen did or these many different plants that are living here or me on this island where my parents moved having not been island people before there's a lot of interesting moss here too so cool oh a little little cup lichens coming out So I'm just here digging around in, in uh, the detritus that's here. A um, little bit of sea lettuce I found and some little worms and things. Um, and, oh, and a little cute little oyster shell. Um, and I think that's going to be it for today, partly because our receiver's going to run out of batteries any second now. Um, but yeah, for this January, I hope you get out exploring enjoy the storms maybe don't spend too much time under large limb trees if there's a big storm going on but uh, safely enjoy yourself and happy exploring <laughs>